Johansson. I'm Rick Johansson, and this is the Iron Echo Design Channel. Today we're gonna do an Inkscape tutorial, a beginner, beginner, intermediate level tutorial, and specifically we're gonna make some retro style travel poster art. So here's two examples I made earlier. We're gonna go with this color scheme, and I chose Santa Monica, California for the location, but if you're gonna follow along, you can choose anywhere you want. And I originally did this one, I wasn't really happy with the color contrast, and I also spelled California wrong. But that's okay. If you're following along, these are the skills you're gonna pick up. First, we'll take a source image and I'll show you how to extract a vector file. So that's where this lifeguard tower came from. And then we'll crop the selection, add a color gradient, do some watercolor effect. And then one of my favorite areas, topography. This is just a boring aerial font, except it's a heavier weight. And then I change the character spacing and then we'll put it all together and then we'll be done. So let's begin. So go to some open space, grab your create squares and rectangles tool and just draw out a rectangle and mine is red. If you don't have your fill and stroke menu, it's this paintbrush in the corner. For fill, I'm gonna go to something very neutral. I can change it later. For stroke, you don't want any stroke. So the black line around there is stroke, just X out of that. With the poster board ready, we can go get the source image. So this time I chose Unsplash. Now this is a resource where it's open source royalty free images and I typed in guard tower, lifeguard tower, but it wasn't coming up again. So instead I'll put the link in the description below to actually find the image if you're gonna play along. So this is it right here. So Janelle Soto, this is the photographer. So thank you, appreciate it. I'm gonna download it here. And then I'll put it onto my desktop, X out of it, and then we'll go back into Inkscape and I'm just gonna drag it back in. For the image import type, embed, image DPI, from file, image rendering mode, none. Now this image is under a megabyte, so it's no problem. But if you're using a source file or a source image that's like five megabytes, 10 megabytes or more, you definitely wanna resize it because some of the functions we do in Inkscape will cause it to crash. Push okay, it'll bring in the image, and there it is, let's back it out here. And okay, so we need to now pull out this lifeguard tower using a tool called Trace Bitmap. Up here, Path, Trace Bitmap, you'll see this menu comes up. There's a lot of action up here. Just focus on this trace bitmap, single scan, brightness cutoff is the setting, and the default is 0.45. And what it's doing, if you don't have anything here, push update. And what it's doing is it's saying, hey, I'm gonna take out the darkness levels at this setting. So this is a mess. So we'll change it to, let's try 0 0.30, then do update. And that's a lot better. So you can play with it based on your source file, but I like the way this looks. I'll push okay. It looks like nothing happened, but it actually did it for us. I'm gonna grab the vector now. See that? I'll zoom in, I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so this is a vector file. We can scale this, we can use it in Inkscape, we can modify it, and I can say goodbye to the source. But now we have to clip it. This is actually your choice of how much you wanna take out, but to do it, you wanna grab Create Rectangles and Squares tool, this is just going to be the area that we clip out. So let's move this out of the way. I'm gonna to go to my fill and stroke. See how it's up here? Down here is opacity. I'm gonna lower the opacity so I can see through it. You want it to be on top. So the clipping box needs to be on top of what you're taking. I'll put it about right there, maybe wider, because I want to. I'm actually gonna have it bleed off the edge, and then we're gonna clip it again at the very end. So that'll do it right about there. If the box is selected, hold Shift grab your vector, go to object, clip, set. All right, here we have the subject of the poster. Now I had, I brought a cheat sheet in. I have my color swatch. I'm gonna take this down because I wanna add the color gradient now to add a little bit more interest. To do that, click on your lifeguard tower and under the fill and stroke, let's first go with um, like the orange. So that's if you just want a straight orange color, but this right here, this is called the linear gradient. So click on that. And now that by default, it's giving us an orange to transparency, which does look cool, but I wanna go orange to yellow. So to change your values on your gradient, it's this pencil thing. That'll bring up this bar. And one side has a square, one side has a circle. The square, if you click that, that's gonna be the orange that we chose. Then to get the other side of the gradient, click the other side, the circle, and usually the transparency is all the way down. So right here, drag your transparency back and then now you can see the second color. Look, look at that, it looks like fire. Uh, I don't want it to be that dramatic. So I'll do my second, my circle, 
end of the gradient will be this yellow. But I don't want it to be sideways. I'm gonna actually change it. So if you grab the handle, you can change the direction of the linear gradient. Right there, that looks good. So see what I'm doing? If you drag your yellow, more yellow, or more orange, I think I'm gonna go a little bit more orange right there. And now let's make the sun. So grab the Create Circles and Ellipses tool. If you hold Shift and Control together, it'll make a perfect circle. And for color, let's go with the preset yellow I brought in. All right, so, so you see how it adopted the, the transparency? That's not the right opacity. So then if that happens, if your color's not looking correct, put your opacity back to full. Yeah, that's more like it. Over here, see how it's going in front of the tower? These are the hierarchy marks. So these like book things. So I'm gonna go down one step and now it's behind the tower. We can move this out of the way. And I want the sun to be bigger. Let's make it nice and like, dramatic. Maybe a little lighter as well. Right there, I think that's pretty cool. If you wanna go back and change your gradient, click back on your tower, and then again, it's that pencil thing. I'm gonna make it a little bit more orange. <laughs> okay, I like that, that's kinda of nice. Maybe I'll shift over the sun. I'm just using the arrow keys just to visually push it with some precision, and let's go with that. Before we go on to the adding the watercolor effect, I wanna put a little sliver of ocean there, like on the horizon line and I'm gonna use the Bezier tool for that. So just draw out randomly. Now if I hold control, it'll lock in a perfect horizontal line, and I'll complete the shape. It's the wrong color. I'll eyedropper this preset teal thing, and I need to drop it down a step. If I don't see my, my hierarchy, it's because I'm on the Bezier pen. So go to your selector tool, and then the hierarchy shows back up. Drop it down one step. <laughs> okay, maybe I'll lower it a tiny bit there. Right there, just like a sliver, just to have like a little pop of color. This will be the same color as the Santa Monica text at the end to kind of tie it all together. This would be a good point to stop and save quickly. So file, save, because now we'll do the watercolor effect. And with this effect, we end up using the filter editor, which kind of puts a little bit more pressure on Inkscape and sometimes it crashes. To do the watercolor, let's grab a shape. I'll just take this square and I'll draw out a square. Right now we're on the teal. Instead, I'm gonna go with this red and I'm gonna put it down here. I just wanted to kind of like create like a fog of, of red. And we're gonna go to filters, texture, watercolor. And our square has become turned into a drop of watercolor. So you see how when you move it, it actually changes the render every single time. Let me show you the presets. I'll put it up here so you can see the differences. So go to filter, filter editor, and then we have the Gaussian blur. I have it at 15, but watch what happens. If I take out the blur, it goes back to my square. And if I do too much blur, it just becomes like clouds and goes away. So we'll go with 15 on that. And then for turbulence, you're gonna want the type to be fractal noise and the base frequency, you'll want it underneath 0 0.10. I have it on 0 0.025 and watch what happens if you go if, if the number gets too high, it gets cheesy real quick. So we'll go back to 0 0.025, and you can play with the numbers. Octaves is the amount of intensity, and seed, I had to look up. This is just kind of like the starting point of the randomization it makes, so you can have fun with that part. Uh, composite has to be on over for the operator. Color matrix, I don't mess with. Displacement map, I have the scale at 45. And then the rest I don't mess around with except for blend. You have to make sure the effect parameters mode is multiply. That means it's using your color of choice. All right, so let's drag this into place. And then now we can, oh, one more thing I can show you is, let's say you like this way that the ink is working, but you wanna really manipulate it, go to edit paths by node, and it gives you some choices here. If you have the top square, that will like let it run. It's just going through, <laughs> it's like programmed to, make it wider. If you do the bottom square, you can kind of extend it out. And if you choose the center X, then you can fly it around like a Dementor, but we don't need that. So let's go back to the corner. I'll do Control D to duplicate it. That makes it too dark, but I can move that one, slide it over, duplicate that one. And this time I'll move it over and I'll change it to yellow. You see how every time you move it, it kind of re-renders? Maybe duplicate that. Actually, I'll show you one more trick. You don't have to do the shape that we used. You can do the Bezier pen and draw any type of shape you want. It's the same method. So you go to filters, textures, watercolor, and it's going to use the same presets we had before. That's pretty cool. 
drop this one in here. I like how the yellow bled into the red there. Okay, so through the magic of editing to speed up the tutorial, I finished the bottom part. I added one big piece of watercolor underneath the sun and then one on top of it. So a little bit of texture on the tower and then lots of texture behind. So then now we can move on and group everything. So I'm gonna zoom out. I'm gonna move this border out of the way. I don't need my color palette over here. So the watercolor effect extends further than you think. So if you wanna group everything, I'm gonna click and drag way off of the page. And I don't know if I have it just yet, so I'll try it again. Hold shift, click and drag way out of there. And now I have it. I don't want that one, so I hold shift and then click on just that. Now with all of this selected, I can do control G to group it, or I can go to object group. And that is all now one unit. So we can take this, our original poster box, and it should snap into this corner down there because I have, I have snapping enabled. So first I'll duplicate it because I'm gonna use one as the bottom poster board and then one as the clipping to stamp the whole thing out. So here's the one that's gonna go on the bottom. And there it goes, it clipped right into place. So for hierarchy, I'll drop it down. <laughs> it looks pretty good already. And then this is my clipping box. Actually, before I can clip it, the whole thing has to be grouped again. So grab the middle of nowhere, get as much as you can. It's all there. Shift, get rid of the palette, click off of everything. With the clipping box, I should change the opacity so I can see through it. So clipping box is selected. Shift, grab everything else, then go to object, clip, set. <laughs> it's our poster. Well, I mean, what's that underneath there? Oh, it came apart. Control Z, and then I guess I have to group the whole thing together again. Control G. Now we can put the label on there. So grab the edit text objects, and we'll type in Santa. So Ariel, we'll go to heavy. Change the color to this teal. And to add some style, we're going to move the letters closer together. So up here you have character spacing. Maybe we'll try negative 50. Right there, negative 50. That looks pretty good, but then see how the S and the A are too close together? If you put your cursor between the two of them, hold Alt and then do the arrow key, you can individually change the kerning, which is pretty cool. I could rechange the font with the point size up here, or you could just visually get your handles, hold Shift and Control, and then you get it about where you want it. <sighs> Santa, <laughs> Santa in the summer. Control D will duplicate that, and then I could just type Monica. A style choice, I'm gonna put this dot of the I into the N, just for fun. And there we go, I'll group everything together. And that's it. There is our Santa Monica, California retro style travel poster that we made in Inkscape. If you followed along, hopefully you're able to come up with something that you're happy with. And if you have comments or have any ideas, drop them in the comments below and have fun with it. Thanks, bye.